Every cocoa farmer needs pots that are like this, fully grown, matured, and they've ripe. They are all ripe. But then let's have a look at this one. As you can see, this one is very immature, young, but it has thrived and it's not be the best. Every cuckoo farmer hates this one. This one too is an, on its way to ripening prematurely. There are a lot of factors causing these ones. So these ones are not what we need or what we desire as cuckoo farmers. Cuckoo farming is a rewarding venture. But sometimes farmers face serious challenges that affect yield and income. One of these challenges is the premature ripening of cuckoo pulse. In this video, we will break it down, what it is, what the impacts are, their causes, how to prevent it, and the solutions you can apply on your farm. I will also share a detailed research work done in this regard by the Cambridge University before this video ends. And I will also share a bonus overlook tip that calls these and their solutions for this session ends. So stay tuned, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more educative farming tips. Now premature ripening of cuckoo pores is a condition where pores turn yellow or red before they are fully matured. Instead of taking the usual 5 to 6 months to fully ripen, the pores begin turning yellow or red much too soon. This early ripening reduces the quality of beans, lowers the yield, and can cause big financial losses to the cuckoo farmer. A lot of factors contribute to this devastating condition. So, what causes premature ripening of cuckoo pores? There are several factors which include pest attacks, the cuckoo stink or the shield bugs. It's a family of shield-shaped insects that produce a foul-smelling fluid when threatened. Hence, they are called ate in Ghana. This insect is a major culprit, piercing pores and sucking out the contents, leading to premature ripening and bean damage. This pest feed on developing beans, causing the pores to prematurely ripen and the beans to turn brown and die. In stink bugs or ate attacks, materials and pods may become completely yellow or yellow in the base or the star half only or usually the latter or yellow in spots depending on the size of the pod and the site of attack. Capsis or merits can also cause premature ripening and pod deformation. They suck sap from the pods stressing them and leading to early ripening. Also, Nutrient imbalance or deficiency. Poor soil, lacking essential nutrients like phosphorus, potassium, and nitrogen, weaken pulse development and potentially lead to premature ripening. Climatic factors and changes in the environment, such as water stress, poor farm management, and others, also causes this. Water stress is when long dry spells or irregular rainfall or lack of moisture in the soil leads to pause to ripen as a survival response for these trees. In poor farm management, overcrowded trees, excess shade, lack of pruning and poor farm hygiene can also contribute to premature ripening. This makes cocoa trees stressed and vulnerable. Again, diseases and fungal attacks can lead to poor ripening. In fungal infections like black pod disease, attack pores caused by various phytophthora species. They can cause them to rot or ripen before their time. Also, frosty pod rot caused by the Meliophthora ruleri can cause premature ripening, especially in pores infected early in their development. It can be a more destructive disease than the black pod rot. There are some impacts of uh, premature ripening, which includes reduced yield because prematurely ripe pores often contain fewer and smaller beans, leading to lower yields. Again, it decreases the bean quality, because prematurely ripe pores may be of lower quality, with a higher risk of fungal infection. The 
It also brings economic loss to the farmer because farmers experience reduced income due to the lower yields and potentially lower prices of affected cocoa beans. In the next chapter, we'll be talking about the prevention and management strategies. To prevent premature ripening of cocoa pods, farmers must adopt good management practices. Some key steps include pest control by the use of insecticides to control sting bugs or the ate and other pests. You can also use integrated pest control by implementing a combination of cultural practices, biological control and chemical control to manage these pests effectively. Disease prevention and management, pruning to improve air circulation, reduce stress and reduce humidity, minim minimize fungal development. A fungicide application, using appropriate fungicides to control fungal disease like the frosty pod rot and the cocoa black, black pod disease can help minimize this. In nutrient management, you have to soil test or you have to do soil testing to determine the nutrient deficiencies and apply appropriate fertilizers to help your cocoa trees. In fertilizer application, you apply a balanced fertilizers or organic compost to keep soil rich in nutrients and ensure optimal pod development. Cultural practice, pruning to improve light penetration and airflow in your farm is key. In weed control, you have to control weeds to reduce competition for nutrients and improve air circulation in your cocoa plantation. By maintaining proper shade, so cocoa trees get enough but not excess sunlight. Also, practicing mulching and other soil management to conserve soil water, especially during the dry season. Always make sure that early detection by regular inspecting cocoa farms for signs of premature ripening and taking prompt action to address the issue is key. In the next chapter, we'll be looking at the solutions to adapt when it happens. If you already notice premature ripening of pods on your farm, here is what you can do. The first one is that you harvest and remove affected pods quickly to prevent spread. Again. You apply recommended fungicides and insecticides to control the underlying cause. Also, rehabilitate the soil by applying compost, mani compost manure or fertilizers to correct this deficiency. Again, by maintaining soil moisture with mulching or irrigation, if possible, can help you in the long run. Also, seek expert advice from extension officers for long-term management strategies to curtail this situation. And as a bonus tip, this situation is mostly overlooked, but it causes premature ripening unknowingly. The use of spray machines that applied herbicides can cause this premature ripening. The solution is that use different spray machines for different chemicals application. Also, if the same machine is being used, make sure you wash the machines well and thoroughly with water several times to remove herbicide deposits. Premature ripening of cocoa pods is a big problem for farmers, but with proper care and farm management, it can be prevented and controlled. Healthy pods mean quality beans and higher income for you. Kindly check the description below for the link to the research work published online by Cambridge University on the 10th July 2009. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this channel for more practical cuckoo farming tips. And in the comments, tell us, have you experienced premature ripening on your farm before? How did you handle it? Was it successful? Share with us your thoughts and views in the comment section. Bye for now.